Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Amel El Agrubi, aka filmmaker Amel. I am a writer, director, and producer, and I have a mission to become one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. So join me on my journey. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about some of the best websites that I enjoy using that I feel are useful to filmmakers. IMDB or the International Movie Database is probably one of the most important websites. And I say this because everyone who's anyone in the film industry will be on this website. That means if you are a writer, director, producer, if you've done makeup, if you're assistant director, if you're a floor runner, you will probably have a credit in the film and it makes it legitimate when it's on IMDB. The great thing about IMDb is you can search anyone up and find out information about them. For example, Ismael Cruz Cordova is an actor that I saw and was interested in. Well, I can search him up here. I can see what he's done before, what he is up to, what films he's been involved in, how long his career has been. And then I can also check this additional one, which is called IMDb Pro. If I check my own IMDb and then go to IMDb Pro here, you'll see that IMDb Pro has a lot more information. For example, you can access who the person's agent is, maybe some contact details or ways to get in touch with them. And another feature that IMDb has is the star meter. The star meter basically just lets you know where you are in relation to the rest of the film industry. If we look here, this has been my trajectory since the start of my career. And you can see it's grown and grown and grown and it's gone in waves. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Sometimes it's up because I've done work or I've promoted myself quite well, or I've been involved in something or films just released or whatnot. Unfortunately, Star Meter probably does count. There's a lot of executives and producers who will look at your IMDb Star Meter to see where you rank. And if you rank quite high, remember, if someone's trying to put a package together and they ask somebody in sales and you are ranked quite low, mm, who knows if they're going to include you or not, but it's just important for you to have a look at. Another very essential website is Box Office Mojo. The great thing about Box Office Mojo is it doesn't just show budgets of films, but it also shows you how the film is done internationally, domestically, and what the profits and revenues are for the film. This will be especially important for any filmmakers, producers, or anyone trying to put a deck together and doesn't have a sales agent, just trying to look for information. The great thing about it is you can also search different countries around the world, how much they're making, according to how many cinemas they have, when they're released, what works in each country and what doesn't. It will also give you an indication of release. So where it was released, how long it was released for, how many cinemas it opened in. And this is such important information to anyone, especially Hollywood. Hollywood gobbles all this stuff up to know how the film was doing. If you look here, one film that I really enjoyed is The Invisible Man. When we look at all those figures, we can see how much the film is made overall in comparison to what its budget is. If you are lucky enough to have a distributor, obviously your distributor will be doing all this. You don't have to think about it. But if you don't have a distributor and you want an idea of what works and what doesn't work in your market or in your country, then this would be a great place to look. For example, I can tell you in the Middle East that animation and children's films does they do great. Well, they do great because there is such a huge population of young people in the Middle East. Number three and number four are quite similar. I never went to film school, so no film school is great for me. I found a lot of information, blog posts, and details about how I can get films done, how I can meet other people, some articles about some filmmakers' works that I can read through, blog posts, etc., etc. Film School Reject is quite similar as well. They do offer some technical information and sometimes information about competitions that I didn't even know. That's the thing, most of us who haven't been to film school, well, you know what? This is great for us because it gives us a film education, allows us to act actually access different parts of the website and find details about being cinematographers or being production designers, etc., etc., etc. On Film School Rejects, for example, I learned a lot about doing mood boards and how how to talk about my vision as a director. For somebody who didn't go to film school, this is completely useful. So I would highly recommend that. The next website I'm gonna recommend, which I absolutely love, 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 is Canva. Canva I discovered the other day and it just, 
it's crazy because it is, first of all, free. Second of all, you can get the pro version if you want, but I do absolutely everything on Canva. And I mean mood boards, I mean decks, proposals, everything. It's just so easy to use. There are templates already there. You can just upload, whether it's photographs, prints, whatever, backgrounds, icons, logo. There's so much in there and it's so easy to use. You just download it as a PDF or as a JPEG or a PNG file. I just love this website. So every filmmaker needs to have a website or social media channels and there's no better place to do it than Squarespace. I absolutely love Squarespace. I struggled a lot, especially when I joined the film industry in 2012 because I had to make the website. I had to learn about how to access the hosting, DNS, you know, I don't even know. There's so many technical terms and I'm not that way inclined. So when I found Squarespace, it was great and it is great because everything is held in one place. Granted, it's not that cheap, but you're paying for everything. You're paying for the hosting, the domain and the ease of access and use. There are so many templates there. You can just pick, pick anything you want and just set it up and it's so easy to do. And finally, one website that I love that has nothing to do with film is the Forbes website. You know, sometimes it's nice just to check something out that's gonna give you inspiration. I'm a woman of ambition and I can tell you people on Forbes have a lot of ambition. I've been looking up the Forbes rich list forever. It's nice to just look at people, see what they do, see how they got there, read their stories, some great, great written articles on there. It'll teach you about finance. It'll teach you about time management. It'll teach you about business. It'll teach you about the environment. It'll show you the 30 under 30s. Then you can actually go and visit our section of the world, which is the media and film entertainment industry and see who's there. You know, it's important to be in the know. Just see who these people are, what they do, because you never know. You might bump into them on the street and you go, ha, I know exactly what you do. Oh, you work in oil and asset management? Okay, well, let's have a discussion about that. And that might be the next person who funds your film. Mm -hmm. That's it for me today, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do find it useful, please share with your friends and fellow filmmakers and anyone who's interested in film and just wants to know more about the filmmaking world and industry. If you do like the content in my videos, please subscribe, click the bell notification. And you know what? Hang tight because I'll see you next time.